Hello, all online medical education summit participants, student orgs, and content creators. Many of you probably heard my introduction at the beginning of the event, but in case you missed it, my name is Chase DeMarco. I love creating medical content, and I have a passion for learning how to learn. As someone without the best memory in the world, I really wanted to learn more about how visual mnemonics and how memory techniques and really the cognitive science behind learning can be implemented better, more effectively, more efficiently, and help us learn better. This led to the creation of the Medical Nemesis podcast, as well as other content. I really had trouble deciding what to cover at this event, since we have so many other great vendors and content creators here. I thought about maybe doing something on test taking skills, but that was already covered by the awesome team at StatMed Learning. I thought about maybe discussing memory, but the team at Pygmonic has already masterfully explained some of these topics as well. So I decided to take my unique experiences and perspective on memory techniques and to elaborate on the memory palace technique in particular for medical learners. Now, you can look on YouTube for different examples of memory palaces, and there are infinite ways of creating these, but it's a creative process. It's something unique and individual to each learner. It's based on their current knowledge and their past experiences and everything else that really makes them them. As opposed to examples I've given in the past, which can be found on YouTube, I'm going to try something new. I'm going to try to explain via memory palace one possible way to remember all of your textbooks in med school in visual form. Now, I've never attempted this before, and I'm sure future explanations will be a little bit more succinct, but this is really going to be an interesting topic and give you a broad overview of the tools and examples of how you can use them, how you can manipulate them, and how you can create your own memory palaces. So let's start off with the visual mnemonic and why I focus on that point. Visual mnemonics access spatial memory and graphical memory in a manner that other modes of information simply can't. Most of us can remember a jingle we've heard on a commercial or maybe a song from the radio. Few of us can remember words as they appear in a textbook or a magazine, but nearly everyone can easily recall a photo from a billboard or a video clip from a recently viewed YouTube video. I'm going to assume that most students here have either used or heard of medical mnemonic resources at this point. There are some very popular video learning series out there, including some participating in this event. And there are also podcasts on the topic to bring you free insights into the benefits and neuropsychology behind the success of this technique. So I don't want to spend too much time on the why this works, but really focus more on how to create them. A term you may have heard of is the memory palace, and this is just lingo that means any scene, real, digital, or imaginary, that you can picture when you close your eyes. It's also known as the method of loci and several others. We generally prefer real scenes, such as your house or a building that you've actually been in, because it's likely to be stronger and more vivid in your memories. But you can use other scenes as well, especially when you're just practicing. There's also macro stations which are the rooms in a palace or a separate area within the palace, some sort of location-based chunking of information. And within these macro stations, we can use the term micro station for points that really stand out within these macro stations, such as furniture and light fixtures, other important points within that room or area. And you can really go infinitely wider or smaller with the location-based memories. It really depends on your creativity and your comfort with the technique. Okay, so now that we have a general idea of some of the terminology we're gonna be using, let's go on to make a rough outline of medicine in a cluster of memory palaces that we can know as a memory city. So I want you to think of a neighborhood or a commercial center or other location, something that's familiar to you and maybe something that has at least 20 buildings or palaces that we can use. Really, something in 20 to 50 is probably a good number. Much more would be a little difficult to visualize if you're new to this technique, and fewer than 20 might not give us enough room to expand. And this can be your current neighborhood or a past one, maybe that of a friend or family, or perhaps even a mall or a city center that you've lived in. Some place that you can visualize very easily is going to work out fine. The catch is you should have entered many of these homes or buildings at some point. 
so that you can visualize the interior so we can set up our macro stations and micro stations later on. If you can't think of anything right now, don't worry about it. This is just a practice to give you a broad overview of how to use this technique later in your education. It's also not uncommon that a lot of past homes or theaters or theme parks or other locations we've been to will come to us when we're not really put on the spot. So when that happens in the future, try to make sure to write them down. You might also want to practice with a television show or video game landscape that you're familiar with. So this is just for fun. Pick any location that you can visualize right now if you close your eyes. Now I want you to pick a starting place. So we're going to call this section of a memory city our memory neighborhood, for lack of a better term. And I want you to picture a starting place within this neighborhood. So maybe if it's your current neighborhood, it's the way that you enter. Maybe there's an entrance and exit. There could be different routes around the neighborhood depending on the size. You could start at your front door. You could start at the entrance of the neighborhood, really wherever you want. Let's just pick a location right now just for the practice. And now I want you to walk or ride or drive from house to house or location to location if you're not using a neighborhood, such as a theme park or other commercial area. What can you see on your left side, on your right side, when you keep moving through the neighborhood, through the driveways, through the walkways of a commercial area? Where is everything located? The more vividly you can picture this, the better for this example. I want you to know how to get from one location to another. What is adjacent to that home with a willow tree in it? Do you know which house number, or at least do you know which location has the electrical box on the driveway or on the walkway as you pass by it? Noticing these little differences will help you relate one location to another later on. And all of these locations are going to be our memory palaces in our neighborhood. All right, so now that you have all the streets, driveways, buildings, other architecture, maybe stop signs, street lights, other things like that, and even the plant life, the vegetation, large trees that stick out to you, pretty flowers, anything that sticks out to you could potentially help with recalling this memory later on. I'm going to assume that you have it all down and memorized, but in reality, it would probably take a few repetitions of this and maybe over several days to really get it down to make sure you know what's where and in relation to each other. But for the purpose of this exercise, let's move on to the next step. So now that we have this section of our memory city, this memory neighborhood, we're going to designate this our medical section. Don't overthink the size of the neighborhood, the details involved in the design, or how long it's been since maybe you visited this if it's been a while. This is just for practice. All right, we're going to get back to our landscape in just a bit. But first, I want to describe a few images to you. And these are going to create the detail that goes into our memory palaces. These are going to be the important parts of our textbooks that we want to remember. So for this example, we're going to use a micro textbook or a section of a micro textbook anyway. And these are known as our visual markers. Now, I'm not going to go into great detail about why I made these associations, these visuals with these topics. You can watch my other video on YouTube called How to Make Memory Palaces and Medical Mnemonics, if you want the full detail of this. So I want you to remember these two characters. The first one is going to be a picture of a white cat holding a golden staff. Now picture that he has on a large white Pope hat or papal tiara. Next, the hat has a red A inscribed on it. Ignore the antibiotic aspect for this point, as we're just using this as a basic example of a visual marker. So the next one is going to be a brown cat. And instead of a golden staff, he's holding a regular old wooden walking stick. He's standing in an empty Petri dish. He is also covered in this weird green slime. Maybe your brown cat looks something like this if you have one. Again, we're going to ignore the antibiotic aspect. And for a quick translation, in the first image, the golden staff is actually a depiction of Staphylococcus aureus, Aureus translates into gold. That's why it's a golden staff that the cat is holding. And because he is a cat, this is going to be catalase positive. And the white is just a designation for me to remember that it is beta hemolytic or completely hemolytic. The Pope hat tells me a few other things, such as it being coagulase positive, And the red A is the alpha toxin, which you might have noticed in some of the text that we skipped through quickly. And the second one, based on the text that you can see here, has a similar scheme. It's catalase positive, 
which is why it's a cat, but it's non-hemolytic or gamma hemolytic, which is why it's a brown cat instead of a white cat. There are a lot of other details that can go into these visuals, but the point is when you make a visual marker like this, you can attach five, six, seven, even more different important parts to a single image and then place this image somewhere for easy recall later on. All right, so we'll come back to these images when we set up our first micro station. Let's get back to our memory city. Next up is to select our first memory palace for the topic we've selected, which is micro here. You can select any of the homes from the neighborhood that you were picturing or any of the rides from the theme park if you decide to go that route. In general, there's a lot of best practices that we would implement if we we're doing this properly and for the long-term memory. But as this is just a practice, don't worry about what you select. The size of it, how familiar you are with the area, and many other factors can go into making a particular memory palace or memory of it stronger or weaker. For most of us, we probably selected our own neighborhood that we're currently living in just because it's the most familiar. And within this, we can probably pick our own home as once again, it's the most familiar one for this practice. Of course, if you picked a commercial or public area, you might choose a study room in a library or your favorite ride at the theme park. It can really be whatever you want them to be. So for this practice, let's select one and go in. I'm gonna select the house. If you've been wondering at this point why I'm making you picture all these streets and buildings and everything else in the neighborhood, well, this is where the visual marker part is going to become much more important. Now that we've selected our palace, we need to select a macro station or a room within that palace. For most people, the macro station that is most familiar to them is going to be their bedroom. So let's select our bedroom. Now in your mind's eye, locate every object that you can within that room. The doors, the windows, furniture, lights, ceiling fixtures, anything that stands out could be used as a micro station. And if you can't remember every detail with your eyes closed and maybe you're not currently in your room, that's perfectly fine too. This is just going to be for practice. So as I'm selecting my bedroom as our macro station of choice for this example, you might wanna do the same, just so you can follow along. Can you picture it in your head if you're not there currently? Or look around, I guess. But remember, you won't always be there. So being able to picture it with your eyes closed is part of the recall practice that comes at the end. I'm also gonna select two micro stations within this macro station of my room, and that's gonna be the nightstand and this bed. We'll pretend this is my bed. On one of the micro stations, we'll place the cat holding the golden staff, and the brown cat will have them jumping on the bed. These loose associations between the topics and the visuals are what usually throw people off. The cat, the staff, the hat, all of these things are really personal to me. They're based on my knowledge, my experiences. And it's the hardest part to usually train other students in. We often use generic images when we're trying to train a mass audience, but because they're generic, they're not going to often be as strong in our memory and they don't have that pizzazz or less profound. So there's a happy medium that can be found between making your own images and using some that someone else created. So just from this scene alone, and using these two micro stations or two pieces of furniture, we have a few dozen facts. We have this Staphylococcus aureus that is catalase positive, that is completely hemolytic, that has coagulase positive as well, and it has this alpha protein. And then we have another handful of associations just with this one green image of the cat. So picture using seven or eight micro stations within a room. And each of these micro stations has an image or a scene that is playing out, which can be associated with a handful, maybe even a half a dozen different topics. You've now fit maybe a whole chapter within this one room, within this one macro station of your memory palace. And you can continue on each chapter or even each subsection receiving its own macro station and dividing up the content, chunking the content together into micro stations to the point that you finally have visual images for your entire textbook. Now it's much easier to recall these images, especially when you've created them yourselves, than it is to go through hundreds of flashcards. And there are dozens of other techniques that we generally implement in order to make sure that we remember them correctly, at least up until the point that we need them for. Not all of this information is going to be useful for your entire career, but it can be a fun and elaborative way to encode this information in a visual scheme 
and then recall it without the need of notes or flashcards or other types of study aids. So let's continue to do this for all of the disciplines or systems that our school will cover in their curriculum. We can go out back to our neighborhood, go to the next memory palace, use that for a completely different textbook, and so on and so forth until we have all of our school subjects within this one network, within this one visual cityscape. And you can add to your cityscape later, making it larger. It doesn't have to be 100% realistic. You can add things into places that they wouldn't logically fit. There are a lot of different best practices to make certain mnemonics stronger, but there's really no such thing as perfection. And the only way to build your skill is to play around with it. So now consider creating your own memory city. Using the same techniques that we started with, visualize a neighborhood or conglomeration of different memory palaces. This time, select palaces that you're very familiar with. Maybe put all of your best friends and your family members' houses on a single street that you can now walk up and down, hopping in and out of each macro station or room. What is placed on each of the micro stations? Can you picture how strong this technique could be to memorizing large amounts of information, recalling this information in possibly a fraction of a second? Of course, since in our fictional memory city, we're not going to have the same way to get around. We're not going to necessarily be able to walk from one house to the other as we did in this example. But that was just to get you used to the technique. As you become more creative, you can find alternative ways, which are way beyond the scope of this presentation, to get around from memory palace to memory palace, to link them in ways that might not be logical. Some use portals and teleport from one place to another and some fly from place to place. So you can probably see how creating this outline ahead of time, this outline of all the topics we want, may be based on your school's curriculum. Or if you're not in school yet, don't worry about it. There are plenty of examples that can be found online. And setting up your memory city ahead of time. You can move things around as one place gets full or as your techniques develop. You should be able to understand the power of these tools now. And that's really all memory techniques are tools to make certain aspects of recall easier for us. I really wish I had known more about these in my first few years of medical school, and it does take some time to learn the techniques and how to overcome obstacles. However, with a colleague or a mentor, your progress can be exponential. So join free forums and Facebook groups like the Medical Nemnus Group and share ideas with others. And who knows, maybe soon you will become a medical nemnist.